first important part, unsaturated fatty acid basics. It is a fat, uh, unsaturated, <sighs> restart. Today, we have so much excitement going on because literally this whole entire video is all about fats. And we're gonna be talking about what exactly chemically is a fat, what is a saturated fat, what's a unsaturated fat, what is a trans fat, we're gonna learn about fats. Starting one, two, three, now. Part one, what actually is a fat? It is a carboxylic acid head group and a hydrocarbon tail. These molecules come together. This is a covalent bond. And this is a fatty acid. This specifically is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a six carbon saturated fatty acid. You can get a huge amount of variety in fatty acids depending on the length of the hydrocarbon chain or the degree of saturation. See that literally every single carbon has a hydrogen on it. We say that this is a saturated fat because each carbon has its maximum number of hydrogens on it. This, oh my God, I made it upside down. Unsaturated fat. And this is also, uh, let me count. This is a 14 carbon long unsaturated fatty acid because see these carbons here, this is a double bond. And so this carbon is not saturated in hydrogens. So it's an unsaturated fatty acids. Fatty acids will vary in length of the hydrocarbon chain. This is a long chain fatty acid because it's literally got a long chain. This is a medium chain fatty acid because it's got a medium chain. And these are short chain fatty acids. This by the way is propionate, propionate. I say it wrong, propionate. This is butyrate. These are both actually ketones and they're super great for brain health in starvation or states of intense exercise, low carb diets. Your body might start to make more of these ketones as an alternative fuel source for your heart and for your brain. And what a fatty acid actually is, it is a carboxylic acid head group with a hydrocarbon chain. Um, I made a mistake in my video. I said these are ketones. These are not ketones. This is a ketone group, which is present everywhere, but these are not ketones. These are short chain fatty acids. These I'm gonna draw now what ketones actually are, or at least like the ketones that are relevant to ketoacidosis or metabolism. Three main ketone bodies, acetate, acetoacetic acid and beta hydroxybutyrate. I'm Googling it so I can know precisely what I'm doing. Acetone, very easy. Also, by the way, this is a nail polish remover. This gets nail polish off your nails because that's what nail polish remover does. This is acetoacetic acid, acetoacetate, OH. Yeah, this is acetoacetate. And this is beta hydroxybutyrate single bond hydroxyl group. Beta hydroxybutyrate, very important ketone for brain health. Acetate, and when someone is in ketosis and they have like keto breath or you can, they just smell funny, it is because this is extremely volatile. Essentially just evaporates out of you, you breathe it out. So when somebody is in ketosis, they are literally breathing out ketones. This is acetate, it's a very volatile, they are breathing it up. Okay, now we are drawing saturated fatty acids. Number and name. The pen would fill off again. What the frick? One second, please. I'm gonna start with how we number and name fatty acids. Like I said before, this is your carboxylic acid head group. This is your hydrocarbon chain. When we are numbering and naming fats, this at the carboxylic acid head group, this carbon here is the number one carbon. So if we are referring to a fatty acid as C10, that means that starting from right here, there's 10 carbons. These are all single bonds. So we know this is a saturated fat because of that zero there. And we know it's 10 carbons long because of that 10. So let's draw C12 zero. Okay, here's my list from Wikipedia of all the saturated fatty acids. I said we're gonna draw C12 zero and C12 zero is 
lauric acid. Lauric acid is super abundant in coconut products and lauric acid has some antibacterial, antimicrobial properties in it as well, which is pretty cool. So C120, we're gonna draw that and then after we'll look at the chemical structure to make sure we got it correct. But I can already promise you we're gonna get it right because drawing fatty acids is so easy and you're gonna nail it. Like I said before, we are starting with the number one carbon right here in the carboxylic acid head group. And then we just make sure that our hydrocarbon chain includes 10 carbons long. And because it's 12, zero, zero double bonds, it is a saturated fat. Here's our carboxylic acid head group. This is the number one carbon. This is the number two carbon. And we're just gonna go all the way so we have 12. This is literally lauric acid. Other important fatty acid nomenclature is alpha, beta, gamma, and omega. These are just ways to identify what carbon we're talking about. And when we're talking about fatty acid metabolism, so beta oxidation, when you are burning fat for energy, we call it beta oxidation because you keep oxidizing the beta carbon. This is your alpha carbon. This is the beta carbon. This is the gamma carbon. This is your omega carbon. I realized my bracelet was hiding underneath my hoodie and I just really like this bracelet. So I put it on especially for the YouTube video. Back to the facts. Alpha, beta, gamma, omega. The very last carbon way down here on the end, that is your omega carbon. So when we're talking about things like omega three, six, seven, nine, that all refers to, this is the omega end and how far away from the omega end is the first double bond, the first point of unsaturation. I will get to that in a minute. We're just gonna do a few more saturated fatty acids. How do we know it's lauric acid? Because we Google it. We know there are 12 carbons and we know there are zero double bonds. So we put into Google fatty acid C12 do do zero and Wikipedia tells us it's lauric acid. Here are some other saturated fatty acids. This is a long chain fatty acid, arachidonic acid. 20 carbons, zero points of unsaturation. So starting from right here, the number one carbon, there's 20 carbons, saturated. This one is steric acid, capric acid. Capric acid, this is actually really fun and exciting. Capric acid is literally called capric acid because it's named after goat. Capric is literally Latin for goat. And because this type of fatty acid is so abundant in goat and sheep's dairy, they literally named the fatty acid after the goat. So this is capric acid and it's my favorite fatty acid. It is a saturated fatty acid and it is <laughs> carbons long. So it is C10-0. This is a short chain fatty acid. By the way, healthy, good gut bacteria will ferment the fiber that you eat and they will synthesize short chain fatty acids. So this is butyrate. You can get it from your diet. So things like butter, grass-fed butter ghee has a lot of butyrate in it. Swiss cheese also has a lot of butyrate in it because the bacteria in Swiss cheese are able to synthesize short chain fatty acids and synthesize Butyrate. If you want to learn more about cheese or health benefits, go see my YouTube video all about cheese right over here. Hey there, this is my mom's painting by the way. Okay, so this is C40. It's a short chain fatty acid because its hydrocarbon chain is literally short. Palmitic acid, probably one of the most abundant saturated fats that you will find in food products, in your diet, and also in your body. 18 carbons long, it's a saturated fatty acid, zero double bonds, and this is palmitic acid or palmitate. An important feature of saturated fats is that they are linear molecules. The molecule, okay, I know it's like all zigzaggy, but this is linear, it exists in a line. So when you have products, food products that are super high in saturated fat, things like butter or tallow, they will be solid at room temperature, and that is because all the saturated fats are linear, so they can pack very nicely and closely together like this. And because they can pack so nicely and so orderly, they are very strongly 
held together and they don't slide around past each other very much. So things high in saturated fat will be solid at room temperature. Butter is solid at room temperature. Okay, unsaturated fatty acids. By the way, these are difficult, so we're gonna go through them together. This is an unsaturated fatty acid, literally because here's our hydrocarbon chain, here are two double bonds. The carbons participating in these double bonds are not saturated in hydrogens. That makes this an unsaturated fatty acid. Just like in the saturated fatty acids, when we are naming this or numbering the carbons, this is carbon number one, and we go, 14 carbon long with two double bonds. So it is C14-2. I don't even know if this is a real fat or not. I just drew it, but we can name it because there are 14 carbons and two double bonds. To further name this fatty acid properly, we are going to identify the location of the double bonds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Delta eight. Eight, nine, 10, 11. Comma 11. This unsaturated fatty acid is C14, two, delta eight, comma 11. This symbol here, is delta and we just use it to represent where that double bond is occurring. Let's draw some more fatty acids. We're gonna draw gamma linolenic acid, GLA. This is an omega-6 unsaturated fatty acid and its formula is 18,3 delta 6, 9, 12. I have not looked at the structure yet, but this gives us all the information we need to know how to draw it properly. C183, 18 carbons, three double bonds, three points of unsaturation, delta 6, 9, 12. These are the carbons at which the unsaturated bond occurs. When we're drawing our fatty acid, the very first thing we start with is the carboxylic acid head group. This is the number one carbon right here. I'm gonna name it by the way right now. Gamma. Linolenic acid. That is what we are drawing. Gamma linolenic acid. So 18 carbons. 18. We have got three double bonds, and those occur at the sixth, the ninth, and the twelfth carbon starting from here. So do not draw your double bonds yet. You have to know where they are occurring. So let's go identify these carbons. This is where drawing unsaturated fatty acids gets really hard and annoying because now we need to make sure that these double bonds are in the cis position and not in the trans position. These are both unsaturated fatty acids. We see the double bond here. This is a trans fat because these hydrogens are trans to each other. They're across each other on opposite sides of the double bond, it is a trans fatty acid. This is a cis fatty acid because when I show you where these hydrogens are, they are on the same side as each other across the double bond. So this is a cis fatty acid. And see how this molecule is kinky? That is because these two hydrogen bonds take up space over here, which forces the molecule to bend. This, because the hydrogens are across from each other, this molecule exists as a linear molecule. It's not bending. When I end up drawing this fatty acid, I will be drawing it linearly because it's just easier that way but I do want to make sure that I get the point across that unsaturated fatty acids do not exist as linear molecules, exist as kind of crazy freaking all over the place molecules, which is actually really important to their health benefits. So these are cis unsaturated fatty acids, by the way, this is omega-6 arachidonic acid. This is omega-3 EPA cosahexaenoic acid, whatever it's called very important for brain health. Where the frick did I put? Oh, I see my lid. Sorry. So we've identified that the double bonds are occurring at 6, 9, and 12. We're going to redraw this molecule, accounting for the fact that we need a double bond here, 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 here. H-O, carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
We draw it straight here because this is where our double bond is occurring. And there's a hydrogen here, there's a hydrogen here. This is what gamma linolenic acid, uh, acid, gamma linolenic acid actually looks like, except I've drawn it linearly. And we know this is an omega, let's see, omega, here's the omega carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six. First double bond occurs right here at the six carbon from the omega end. So it is an omega six fatty acid. Yay! We did it! See you later. Let's draw DHA. DH, oh, hey, hang on a second. I am a little bit crazy because I literally have an Amazon prescription for sardines to be delivered to my house every two weeks. And sardines are a really good source of omega-3 fatty acids. So EPA and DHA, these are both polyunsaturated fatty acids. They are omega-3s and they are so freaking important for brain health and for heart health. This, by the way, is what EPA looks like, icosahexanoic acid. It is an omega-3 fatty acid and we know it's an omega-3 from looking at its structure. This is the omega carbon. One, two, three. Three carbons in from the omega carbon is where the first point of unsaturation occurs, omega-3 fatty acid. This is actually, let's name it. How many double bonds are there? One, two, three, four, five. C, 20, five. And now we have to identify where these double bonds occur, starting from the number one carbon. Okay, one moment, please. This is EPA, icosapentanoic acid. Incredibly, ridiculously, so freaking important for brain health. This is what it actually looks like. And see that it's all kinky, curvy, bendy because of these unsaturated bonds. They force the molecule to curve. And that is very important for its actual biological function. In biology, this is a huge trend you will hear about all the time. Structure equals function. Function comes from structure. That is a very important concept in biology. And you can see that because this is a uniquely shaped fatty acid versus omega-7, which is shaped like this. These shapes give them distinct functions. The other super healthy fat that you get in sardines is DHA, dexa, decosa, hexa, let me Google it. Docosa hexanoic acid, DHA. This is the last one we're gonna draw because this is gonna stretch my brain a bit. C226, delta 4, 7, 10, 3, 16, 19. This is all the information we need to draw the fatty acid. So let's draw it. This is gonna be challenging, but we're gonna nail it. Where the frick did I put my pen? Okay. First thing we need to know, how many carbons? 22 carbons, six unsaturated bonds. C, 22, six. Location of the unsaturated bonds. Delta, four, seven. I really need to pee. This is taking me so long. I drank so much water and I just really need to pee right now. So let's finish drawing this fat. And then the video will be done and I can go pee. Four, seven, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, six. Okay, now we're gonna draw it. Start with the carboxylic acid head group. And we have to do 20 carbons. 21, 22. Six unsaturated bonds, they are occurring at these place, these carbons, so okay. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Is that correct? One, two. One, two, three, four. Omega, one, two, three. That's where that double bond is gonna be. And we can see from the omega end, the third carbon in is participating in that double bond. So omega-3 fatty acid. Let's draw it per, 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 properly. Okay, 
Here's us, here's a star. These are all the double bonds, all the unsaturated bonds. Now let's draw what this molecule looks like when it's bending. H O. One, two, three, four. Double bond. Four. Omega 3, so okay, here's the omega carbon. One, two, three. This is DHA. We did it! This is DHA. That's all you need to know to draw a fatty acid. You need to know how many carbons, how many unsaturated bonds, the location of the unsaturated bonds, and then all you need to do is draw it. If it is something like an omega 7, which I'll show you. One moment, please. Omega. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The first double bond occurs at the seventh carbon in from the omega end. In other um, fatty acid nomenclature, we will call this alpha, beta, and gamma carbons. This is relevant to metabolism and beta oxidation, the process of actually metabolizing and burning fatty acids for energy. We are calling it beta oxidation because we keep on oxidizing the beta carbon. And each round of beta oxidation this whole entire fatty acid gets shorter, 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 shorter because we keep on chopping this bond here. This is a triglyceride because there are three fatty acids on a glycerol molecule. This is pretty much the type of fat that you have floating around in your blood. This is how fatty acids are delivered to your cells, actually. Cells have lipase enzyme on them or around them. Lipase enzyme cleaves the fatty acid off of the glycerol molecule, which leaves you with one of these that your cell can grab onto and use for whatever purposes it seems fit. You can have these existing as triglycerides, diglycerides, or monoglycerides. Triglyceride, three. Diglyceride, two. Monoglyceride, just one. That's really biologically how you're going to find fatty acids. They rarely exist in their free form. This would be them in their free form. They are most common found esterified, I think that's the term. In some form of tri, di, or monoglyceride, you will find fatty acids. Trans fats. Here is our omega. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here's omega-9 oleic acid. It is a cis fatty acid because these hydrogens are on the same side. This is omega-9, but it has been transformed into trans fatty acid. These are ridiculously bad for your health. Very well associated with atherosclerosis, dyslipidemia, heart disease, heart attack, stroke, metabolic disease. Trans fatty acids do not occur in nature. They are a product of human processing and see that when it is in the cis conformation, it's kinky. When it is in its trans conformation, it's linear. Things like margarine that are solid at room temperature have a ton of trans fat. It, the reason it's solid and not oil, even though margarine is made from oil, is because when you transform that fat, now it is linear and it can pack very tightly together. When this molecule can pack very tightly together, it is solid at room temperature because they're more orderly. They, these molecules pack tightly together and they can bond very strongly with each other. So they don't flow like loosely around each other. When you have unsaturated fatty acids in their natural cis conformation. See how it's bendy? These are not going to pack very nicely together and instead they will be very fluid with each other. They're going to flow past each other. Things like olive oil, avocado oil, these are oils and liquid at room temperature because all these unsaturated fatty acids, they are not packing very tightly. They are not bonding and being held together very strongly. Instead, they're just flowing around. So you get an oil. Oh my gosh, everybody. This concludes today's petite little video all about the chemistry and molecularity of fatty acids. I really hope you liked it because I got super excited about making it and all the notes, all the comprehensive notes, those will be available on my website, nutritionbyelsa.com. 
The notes to this video will be a free download and in my later series, I have an organic chemistry series coming out and a biochemistry series coming out. Those will also have comprehensive notes and you will be able to purchase those comprehensive notes on my website.